Another mega contract for another star receiver in the NFL. Is Devo Samuel next? And how much is he going to get paid going into the final year of his rookie contract? And the 49ers bringing in an edge rusher, a free agent on a visit. Could that uh, tell what their hand is looking like for the NFL draft? All that more coming up right now. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers. Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker with you once again at BD Peacock at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. I think we'll be able to get into some Twitter questions a little later into today's program. Thanks for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What do you think, Croc? 20 million? 25 million? Nico <laughs> Samuel, when he saw the news on, what was it, Wednesday morning? of the Stefan Diggs signing, much like he's posted on social media. Uh, I don't remember the last, uh, was it, it might've been Hill. I don't know. What are the, the other contracts for a big time wide receiver recently? He kind of said Probably something. Hill, Hill and Diggs. Yeah. And he's like, uh, okay then. Oh, okay then. That's what Debo had to say. <laughs> and, and he's definitely watching and he's definitely laughing right now at some of the money that some wide receivers are getting paid now some of these wide receivers are, are leaving to another organization to get paid but stefan Diggs did not have to do that he's sticking around with the buffalo bills a four-year extension for stefan Diggs, uh 70 million of his dollars guaranteed but he still has two years left on his deal so overall when you look at the money he's going to make for the next six years which is the the two years he has left on his current deal plus the four-year extension it's a little over $20 million. So that's not crazy money, but the new four years is higher annual average Valerie to value, you know, 20, 20 or 24, $25 million a year. So it begs the question for, for his entire contract. Now it's 20 mil per year. So is Debo looking at 20 mil per year or is he just no. looking at half of that and saying $25 million per year? Because none of the wide receivers that got paid recently are getting all of that money per year. For the average, they're getting twenty million. But the way these things are um, are put together, and the way the agents are throwing out the dollars, it makes it look really big. And I don't know if the teams see it that way. I don't know if the agents of Debo and DK Metcalf and AJ Brown and Terry McLaurin and all these wide receivers coming up, they're going to be making some money or seeing it that way. Uh, but this is going to get very interesting with some of these, and you know, teams calling about DK Metcalf. Apparently, some teams called about Debo. I think there's zero percent chance Debo would get traded. I do see an opportunity for someone like DK just because of what's going on in Seattle right now. But Debo Samuel is he asking for twenty million? I think they can get a deal hammered out. Is he asking for twenty five million dollars? John Lynch might say, "Okay, let's see you do it again, Debo." R real quick, so Stefan Diggs before this new contract kicked in, and I just saw this a few days ago. I was like, "Wait a minute, I just saw this." So his brother had quote tweeted it and put "LOL, wow." Trayvon Diggs was making 14.4 million. And I guess he maybe he might make that over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then once the new money kicks in, boom, obviously it goes up, shoots up, and he's going to be paid. Now, the good thing is Buffalo getting it done now, right? Because, you know, well, in two years, you start talking about new TV money and stuff like that. All these new guys getting signed, guys like Debo, DK Metcalf, AJ Brown. In a couple of years, when that $24 million a year kicks in, or however much it is, $24 million, I mean, he'll be amongst the highest paid, but he won't be the highest paid. So even then, it'll be, look like a deal. And then you also, you also have to factor in, by that time, guys like Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle, those guys will be up for contracts. What are, they, what are those contracts going to look like? So I think getting it done right now, very smart for Buffalo. And big time for Diggs. One thing I do want to say about just the situation there, Diggs, happy in Buffalo. Everything's going well. Obviously, he got an elite quarterback. I just remember a few years ago when Antonio Brown, and I think I may have said it on the air, but Antonio Brown was traded to Buffalo and was like, I ain't going there. And then all of a sudden, the trade went away because nobody wanted to play with Josh Allen. Like, he was so erratic. He was throwing the ball 
all over the place. And it was like, you know what? No, I'm cool off that quarterback. Send me somewhere else. Brown ended up going to the Raiders, and, you know, Patriots, whatever. But it's cool to see him get paid. And yeah, what does it mean for Debo Samuel? And if I'm Debo Samuel, no, I'm I'm not looking at the overall average per year. I'm looking at, okay, a couple of years he's going to be making 24. Well, if I sign right now, that 24, no, I need, I actually need a little bit more than that. Cause in two years, when my contract is two years old, I need it to still match with some of these other guys to get it. Yeah. And I wonder how it's structured. Did they tear up the two years that he has now and bump that up? So is he going to make, be making $20 million now this year and next year, or are you still making 14 and 14? Then it goes up to 24, $25 million. That's the question I have. And then there's $70 million guaranteed that's going in there somewhere. So I wonder if they, they wanted to, um, bring him up to where he belonged to be as one of the top receivers in the league and bring up his current salary. Or if just it's a, he's playing out his, the last two years of his old deal. And then there's four new years that start over at that new dollar figure, uh, you know, in 2024 or whatever it is. So that, that'll be interesting. And that'll be a really hard, it honestly kind of makes the negotiation more difficult for someone like Debo, because now there's two different dollar figures that you're looking at and you'll be fighting over. Right. Um, and so maybe who knows the 49ers, are able to structure something that way. Like, okay, you want Diggs contract? How about 14 for two years? And then 24 kicks in. And so, and then again, you're at $20 million average, but you could pay more later, less now. Maybe you tear up his the last year of his rookie deal, which is not a lot of money. Give him more money now, which will make him feel better about it. And then those averages can be lower for the long haul. Do you let him play it out? So there's a lot of different ways this could go. In one way, when you say, okay, well, it's still just another $20 million contract, which is a lot of money, but it's not too crazy. And if everyone's just going to be signing the same contract, then it's not that big of a deal. But if he's trying to go over $25 million per year, I don't think the 49ers want to. And I don't know if they necessarily should, with Debo's injury history, try to pull something off like that this offseason. Let him play out the season throw the franchise tag on them and say, okay, well, let's get something done because the 49ers would have the same amount of leverage then as they do now. And they would have at least seen him do it for another year. I think if I'm Debo Samuel, I I'm okay. I see the veterans and they're getting paid and all that. And their contracts are structured weird or whatever. And what's real, what's fake, whatever. Okay. But I'm looking at DK Metcalf, AJ Brown, and Terry McLaurin. Those are the three guys that his agent is going to be able to go off of. How is his production compared to those guys? Uh, they've all had different things go on, especially A.J. Brown. He had kind of an injury riddle season. I think before this last season, people were telling me that A.J. Brown was elite. I don't know if they still feel quite that same way, but you're going to have to factor all that in. I, I I don't even know if – I wouldn't even really focus on Diggs and those guys. If I'm his agent, if I'm the 49ers, we're just going to, we're going to focus on these other guys that are in your same class. What are they getting? Because I do think he's in the same – they're in the same tier as them. And I think they're all really good. They're all really good. And he's had the best season of the of, of all those guys. But they're still kind of, I think, in the sense of just how maybe they're valued or seen around the league, probably fairly similar. Yeah, I think they are fairly similar. So maybe if you're Debo, you kind of wait. So one of those guys can sign and you say, okay, I want a little bit more than that guy got. Yeah. And yeah, and so it, but coming into 2021, Debo would have been fourth on that list as far as production right. goes between Debo, AJ Brown, Terry McLaurin. But then he put up the best season of all of them combined, but he's only done it for the one year. And some of those guys had multiple years uh, of higher level play. So yeah, there's, there's a little AJ bit. AJ had of, multiple thousand yard seasons. Yeah. So it, it, you, you could probably negotiate that either way, argue who's better. They're all very different styles of players, but they're all very good. And they should probably all get around the same range of money. So we'll see what they end up getting. And maybe Debo should just, maybe Debo, should, here's the question. So, and and we'll, after the break, we'll hit this question, Croc. And I'll ask you, so if you're Debo, would you rather take a little bit less? And when I say a little bit less, you know, settle for 20 million instead of trying to squeeze the 21 million out this off season, right? Is it worth taking 1 million less in a long-term deal when, with your injury history being used as the wide back, as a running back, maybe a little higher injury rate there, is it worth that when you could potentially lose $10 million, right, uh, by getting hurt and lose multi-million dollars instead of just a million dollar per year on a contract? So I'm going to ask you that question. I'll give you a second to think about that. Uh, while I talk about betonline.net, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information this season. Find all the latest sports developments, including 
this week's Masters Championship. Tiger Woods is back. Odds, podcasts, and reviews, and all the different angles for, for all the different leagues this season. And yeah, you can still bet on the NFL. Super Bowl futures and tons of draft props going up there all the time. Croc, you are the DB expert and the host of Locked On NFL Draft. Ahmad, Sauce Gardner, over under seven and a half? I'm going under. He's gone by pick seven. Yeah. Derek Stingley over under 12 and a half. Ooh, I'm going under there as well. He tested very well today. He very, he very well may go high. Was up the four, three, seven today, right? 38 and a half inch vertical. Derek Stingley. Uh, people kind of forgot about him after the beginning of his career started so well at LSU. So you can bet on tons of different props, tons of different players, teams, who goes where at bet online, your continued source for all the sports wagering information. Uh, live betting and esports and scores. So get over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Thanks everybody for making Locked On 49ers your first listen every day. Make sure you're following Locked On NFL, Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. Some great draft content coming up over draft weekend as well on the Locked On NFL YouTube channel. I might make an appearance there. Croc might make an appearance there it's free and available wherever you get your podcast what do you think croc you're debo do you take a million dollars a year less do you try to squeeze every cent out of the 49ers this off season or do you bet on yourself as a wide back for another year and try to go into free agency next year and make even more money after putting up another huge season well you you definitely have to take the money because you want the guarantee and again, I just think it depends on, on these guys. Where are they signing for? Now, here's the interesting thing. And if you are watching the YouTube, you probably saw me looking up and writing stuff down while our guy Peacock was reading the ads. But here we go. Something interesting to think about. Debo Samuel turns 27 in January. So whatever contract he gets right now, that might be his legit like kind of last chance to, to really go get big time money. All right, if he signs a five-year contract, by the time this contract even starts, he'll be he'll already be 27 going on 28. So he'll so, be yeah. This this contract he signs will take him through age 30 season. Age 30 at like least one yeah. or two. He'll be in his 30s. Right. And it's so and yeah. it's hard to cash in once you're in your 30s. DK Metcalf's only 24 years old still. So DK Metcalf so, was a was a red shirt sophomore coming out of college. Debo is a fifth year senior, I think. Right. So you have Terry McLaurin who Somehow it's older than D Debo. He actually turns 27 in December, so he's a few months older than Debo. But A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf both only turned 25 this year, and D.K. turns 25 late this year. He doesn't turn 25 to December. So I say all that to say, whatever contract extension they sign, they have the opportunity to re-up. So maybe getting that extra million or two or five million extra guarantee, whatever it is, might not be as important to those guys. I'm sure it will be to their agents. But I know to the players, when you start thinking about the long term, this might be Debo and, and McLaurin, they might not see another big contract like that. After this, it might be some kind of year to year type stuff and people questioning their age, how healthy have they been over that time as well. That's interesting. So if you're Debo, I wonder if the right move wouldn't be to make sure you get as much of the guarantees as you can. And sign that deal now this offseason, just in case you do have some injury problems pop up, playing that wide back position, because there's just there's just a higher level, uh, ch higher chance of him getting hurt than than the other receivers, because the way he plays as a wide receiver, and definitely if they're going to be handing him the ball and he's running into 300 pounders in the middle of a, of a defensive line, right? So get those guarantees as high as you can and protect yourself from injury with that contract, because this might be the last time you cash in. So down the stretch of the season, second half of the season, just in the regular season, he had more carries than receptions. And then come playoff time, he had more carries than receptions. So the tough thing with that is, and we all know, really just in general with any running back, right? Like why, you know, I've argued against Frank Gore and, and people have said, well, the longevity. And there is something to that because running backs don't last a lot of time. Like they don't last for as long as most other positions, any receivers position. specifically, right? Now, I feel like that shelf life is even shorter play for Kyle Shanahan because all his backs get hurt. So the more you put him in harm's way carrying the ball, which 
you know, that's part of the package, right? Like with Debo Samuel, he's an elite football player, 1,400 yard receiver, but he also got run for another four. He had eight touch rushing touchdowns. Someone posted a highlight from the, um, the Cincinnati Bengals game where he just took a little sweep and just, uh, let me run around and run past everybody down the sideline. Like that's part of the package. That's part of what makes him special. Yeah. So that's something that you definitely have to take into account. And as you said, you know, you start talking about thinking about injuries. That's something that makes me not really want to play out this year. Like I need my money. I need my money now. Maybe I, if I'm him, I'm probably willing to hold out to get this money because I need those guarantees especially if you're going to continue to use me the way that you do. Yep. And it's funny because as soon as John Lynch says, well, you know, we use him a lot as a running back. So let's look at some running back comps and maybe Christian mm. McCaffrey money. And his agent's like, nope, we'll, we'll, we'll talk later. <laughs> but you can't, here's the tough thing. And now if he holds out, that's one thing. But if you start getting into the, okay, we'll play him. And then he kind of misses some, uh, games or whatever because it's a little banged up and then you go into the offseason and they're like, well, can't figure out. Oh, let's franchise tag them. All right. Now we're talking about turning 28 the next, you know, like his age is going. So the clock is kind of ticking on him to get a long-term deal done. So yeah. he can't even really play the game of, well, just wait. Oh, franchise tag me. All, all those things. He can't do that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And here's the other wrinkle in this is that Jimmy Garoppolo money still on the books. So it's going to be hard for them to give Debo Samuel an immediate raise, right? Cause even, cause he's on that rookie contract. So whatever they sign him to, he's going to have a signing bonus and it'll probably go up a little bit unless they just want to try to push everything back into the future on a new deal with him. So that's another wrinkle in this. And I wonder if that has to, I wonder if Jimmy has to be off the books before the 49ers can really logistically sign Debo to that contract. Does the signing bonus go against your cap? Like if you say, all right, we're going to sign him right now. It's future money, but we want to give him 20 million or 30 million this year. Signing. It's it's prorated. So whatever. So basically they would make his base salary as low as possible. So whatever prorated post portion of, so let's say it's a four year extension and his signing bonus is $20 million. That's $5 million per year his contract at least has to cost $5 million this year and they can give him a lower base salary and higher base salaries in the other year. But the prorated portion of the salary bone salary or the, the prorated portion of the signing bonus will have to still be on the books for year one, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, but they could add some roster bonuses. So then that way, those parts of the signing bonus wouldn't be due yet. So you could make the sign for year one because you'd have roster bonuses every year even though they're guaranteed roster bonuses he would get those and they would be part of his signing bonus overall but it could be structured in a way to keep the dollar amount down so they could still do it with jimmy garoppolo on the roster with, with the way they structured the deal but it, it'll be a little bit more difficult because it's not like a, a veteran who's already making a lot of money like if it was nick bosa when they do a new nick bosa deal they could actually make his cap number go down in year one because he's already making a lot of money but since debo's cap number is so low you can't really make it go lower if you sign him to a big deal. Gotcha. Kamoko Toure. Kamoko Toure was all the rage four years ago. 2018 draft. He was taken in the second round, an edge rusher by the Indianapolis Colts. And he did have his career best five and a half sacks last year. He had only amounted, what, five, six, six and a half sacks in his career his first three years before 2021 before hitting free agency a lot of injuries in his career has only started three games all three of those starts he had was as a rookie uh with the colts 6'5, 248 coming out of rutgers in 2018 he was the second round pick number 52 overall uh the, he is coming to visit the 49ers the 49ers are giving the free agent edge rusher a look what do you think about kamoko to ray do you remember him coming out into the draft and, and do you think this has an impact on what the 49ers are doing right now are they looking at the draft board and saying oh maybe we can just go get the guy because a lot of these guys are very similar prospects to what kamoko to ray was four years ago that the niners might be looking at at 61 maybe this is a sign saying the niners might want to go away from edge in the second round yeah he is kind of that guy where is like, oh you know take a flyer on him in the draft maybe you like some athleticism definitely remember him coming out of Rutgers. I mean, he, he was a hot name amongst 49er fans, and I think everybody was just kind of desperate at this time because that was pre-Nick Bosa. We're talking about 2018. That was this the Cassius Martian. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, the Niners needed edge. Uh, I, I was all about Kamoko Toure until I saw 
um, uh, Harold Landry. Harold Landry slipped to the second round. I was like, yeah. oh, Harold Landry's got to be the guy. And what they do? They traded up in front Dante of Pettis. and got Dante <laughs> Pettis. Yeah, so they got Dante Pettis like a couple picks in front of the Colts. In yeah, fact, so you know what? Hold on. Did they trade with the Colts and the Colts used the 49ers pick to draft Kamoko to Ray? I don't I'm going to get on that right now, but yeah, he, def yeah, he but, definitely went in that range in 2018. Yeah, while, while you're looking for it, to, to me, again, it's if you are, you know, you play your four years and you're just out there floating around and people haven't signed you yet, to me, you're you're on the same tier as all the other guys, as and maybe even a lesser than with, you know, the Kerry Hiders, the Arden Keys, the guys where it's like, hey, man, you know, coming out, maybe there was something there. But right now, it's like, you know, maybe a depth piece. Hell, even Willis, and I know the 49ers, the way they acquired Willis was trading uh, for him, trading him, uh, going to, you know, from the Bengals. But, yeah, I mean, it doesn't. To me, it doesn't move the needle, but it just adds someone who, hey, let's see what Kassar could do. Because one thing about Kassar, he has turned, I don't want to call these guys nothing, but he's done a lot with not so much in the sense of production. Like, last year, Nick Bosa was coming off the edge. Everybody knew that. But for the 49ers to get the pressure and the push and have the rotation that they did on opposite opposite Nick Bosa, I think that says a lot about Kasturik and him putting guys in position to win. I almost feel, and I do like Ture, and I almost, and I like Ture more, and to be honest with you, I didn't watch a lot of his career with the Colts. I know there's a ton of injuries. I'll read his injury updates here in a second but i feel like he's kind of more of the same i feel like the 49ers need more you know they got a lot of guys they need a little bit more in that second rusher and not have the revolving door and it's been just a revolving door across from bosa every single year and they hoped d ford was going to be that guy and he was super impactful when he was healthy but i feel like they gotta eventually find that guy and settle in with a, a cheaper version of a, a of a of a edge rusher on a rookie contract while they're paying Bosa because they've got these journeymen out there. Uh, pretty much all of them are journeymen now on the 49ers defensive line, aside from <laughs> Nick Bosa, right? Or at least the edge guys are. And Amena who could play a little inside. So there's maybe some wiggle room to add him another edge there and play a who more inside. But man, I, I'm hoping for more and maybe Kamoko Ture, there's more there. But man, um, I still think it's it's a bigger need in the draft. This isn't a great draft because they don't have a first round pick. If they had a first round pick, oh man, they, they would have their they would have an opportunity late one. Will one of those guys drop and they can move up? I think that's where it gets interesting for the 49ers. I, I, I still don't know if it's a need. And I know there are a lot of 49ers fans like you gotta get edge, you gotta get somebody opposite Bosa. But I think they just have enough bodies to to continue to throw there. You know, they, they do have Ebucam, right? Who came on strong towards the end. And then once you look at just the ro rotation, the guys that they have outside of that, because again, you mentioned Ebby Cam, you mentioned uh, uh, Aminahu, also Hyder that you just brought in. I feel like they continue to kind of add guys to where if you draft a rookie at 61, or even if you trade up to 50, how much better is he going to be than those guys? I think you just kind of throw them into the power guys and see – what comes from it. Now, if you're talking about early second round, I think you can still get more of a high profile guy that just moves the needle a little bit more. But I pick 61. There'll be somebody there with talent, but how much better will he be than Amina Who and these other guys who have been productive at the NFL level? And maybe that's their thinking. They were just they would if they moved up to 52, they'd be picking the next Kamoko to Ray. Anyway, so why not just go sign him in free agency, go different way in the draft, and maybe see if they can find someone later in the draft uh, that could come in and, and do some things for him there. By the way, it was the 49ers moving up from number 59, not 52, to pick 44. They traded with Washington to move up in 2018 to draft Dante Pettis. Yeah. Let's get to the Locked On 49ers mailbag, shall we? Let's do it. Oh, by the way, I did want to mention the, the injury history from for uh Kamoko Toure because it's extensive and the 49ers have been sort of very shy the last 12 months or so adding players with an extensive injury history so Toure broke his ankle during week five of the 2019 season after he started three games as a rookie he missed the rest of the year so only played five weeks in year two uh in 
2020. He missed some time with some injuries as well. It's not specified here what that injury was. And then 2021, he played in only 27% of the Colts snaps, but just as a situational rusher had a career high in sacks. So now that he's settled in as just sort of a pass rush specialist, I wonder if that's what the 49ers are looking at him as. Just third down, let's bring some heat off the edge. And that's that's what Kamoko Toure would be for the 49ers at this point. To, I'd be mad at that. Hey, I would not be mad at Toure, and I don't think he's going to be a, a costly addition anyway. And bring some competition. If, if nothing else, if you're just going to have a bunch of Jags out there, make it a competition. You know, let the best man win and and earn that spot in the rotation. To Mark on Twitter, and this kind of goes back to our earlier conversation. He says, uh, "Seeing these mega wide receiver deals, are we really sure paying Debo after one good season is a good idea? <laughs> I mean, the guy is awesome." But he has only done this once and does have a tendency to break down due to his style of play. Uh, I got to push back on the injury thing with Debo just a little bit. And, uh, I think it's a little exaggerated because of his sophomore year in the NFL. Now, I know he dealt with like a couple things in, in college, but in the sense of the NFL, his rookie year, he played 18 games, 18 out of 19. The one game he missed was the Washington now, commander game out in the pouring ring. That was the only game Debo missed. The next year, remember, he broke his foot in the offseason. And I think that broken foot led to not really being in the best shape that he could possibly be. And he pulled a hammy. He tried to come back from it, and he pulled it again, and then he sat. So I, I know it, like there is this big narrative around Debo and the injuries because of how he plays. His injuries have not come from how he plays. <laughs> At least in the NFL. Like, there hasn't been one injury that is due to contact. It could be how he runs. It could be the conditioning. It, I think a lot of it, again, stems from the foot injury. If it weren't for the foot inj injury, are we even sure that he would have gotten hurt at all his second year? So I know everybody keeps pushing that narrative of the injuries with Debo. and may Maybe. Maybe there's something there. But I, I don't know if it's, it's – last year he didn't miss a game. Did he miss a game last year? Yes. He did? He missed. Ham, hammy. Hammy injury? Hammy. There's, there's been some lower body quad? injuries. Some it other minor injuries. I think it was like a quad. I My memory is not good enough to recall which game that was that he missed. Uh, missed it something. was like before Cincy or, some, or something like he that. He started week. It wasn't week one, right? That was the year before. No, it was like week. It was like right before the Cincinnati game or somewhere around there. Because when they came back, his usage was... Like, different. Yeah. Uh. Well, no. It says he played 16 games but only started 15. Well, yeah, there's 17 games in the season. Oh, there's 17 games now. You're right. So, yeah, he did miss a game. So, he missed the end of one game and then the beginning of another. Yeah. Can't remember what game that was he went out. Of. But anyways, so, I mean, okay, he's missed. He missed a game this and then the game that first year, then a few games, whatever. I, I don't think that's the worst thing ever in the sense of, oh, he's injury. I mean – Guys, yeah, you are going to, you know, miss something here and there. Something that I think for him is getting under control of the, the hamstring stuff and, and the soft tissue injuries. Yeah. And like, I think it's not like he's like, oh, I ran over somebody and I separated my shoulder. Or, oh, I, 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 I ran over somebody and I gave myself a concussion. Right. It's, oh, man, I ran. I mean, remember when he got hurt? What game was it? it, it the, the, that year two, the... Was it Washington or it was someone the first play, first play of the game, it was the end of round. He got the end of round and pulled up and, and didn't come back. But you know, a matter of it's, fact, the, the, this year I remember the play he got hurt. It was a run play. He was going sideways, or it was a screen screen or something. It was like behind the line of scrimmage, and then he kind of just went down. Yeah, that was a scary one. I remember that. Yeah, he just crumpled over. I was like, oh, did he? What was that? Did he just tear an ACL? It was one of those. Yeah. Was, I, I think it was non contact, wasn't it? Yeah. They, so it, it's not something, I, I mean, in the sense of the physicality part of it. And again, you run enough like running backs, we see it, they do break down. But I don't know if that's his issue. There, there's and he doesn't else. make as much contact as a pure, pure running back would. Right. But it does worry me. I don't need to see those halfback dives when he's in the game you know like they, they could do without some of that stuff and i said the same thing about uh about trey lance when he was taking some qb powers in, in the first start it was like okay gotta calm down on some of that stuff you can't just pound him into the into the ground like that 
But um, I, I do think the Debo injury stuff, I was worried going into last season about just how uh, the how much stress he puts on his lower body, just like, you know, just explosion into the ground. You know, I was like, oh, man, is this guy is going to have feet problems? Is it always going to be soft tissue injuries? And then he was relatively healthy last year. So that was really cool to see. And hopefully he can do that again. I do have a guy, though. And, and remember, at some point, maybe we'll have him on this offseason. We talked about last offseason. But he said, at some point, Debo is going to have a soft tissue injury during the season because of how he runs. And he was adamant about that. And then we saw it. And then they had to scale back on some of his, you know, route running and, and things like that. His usage. There are a couple of games where he had like one target, another one where he had one, but then they handed him the ball a couple of times. It was really weird. The whole thing was weird. And so to that point, yeah, it would worry me a little bit given Debo the entire back, like everything and more that he wants, just based on the one season and you know, prove it again. He, he's got to stay healthy again and, and show he can do it if he, if he wants the full, you know, if he wants the full bag opened for for him. Um, a question here regarding Jimmy Garoppolo from Izaz. He says, by not releasing Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers only having $1.1 million in cap space, it will balloon to 26 once they do. Is that a ploy to show Nick Bosa and Debo Samuel that they are so tight against the cap and force them to take less money than the $30 million and $25 million per year, respectively, that they might deserve? No, because whatever y'all got going on with Jimmy Garoppolo has nothing to do with me and my future money. It, they could try that, but it, it'll be that same. No. Click, it'll be that same hang up as the 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 running back money for Debo. Yeah, yeah. I ain't, I'm not hearing none of that. No. Whatever y'all, we'll cut them in. Whatever y'all got to do, but I need my money. If anything, it would be from the 49ers saying, "Look, Debo's agent. Sorry, I don't know who Debo's agent is. Look, Debo's agent. <laughs> uh, we don't have the we don't have the cap space to sign you right now. So we'll we'll talk we'll talk extension on a later date. Maybe that's." it but it wouldn't be a, a negotiating ploy at all right and maybe maybe in the end it'll ultimately be the thing that makes the 49ers realize okay now it's time we got to cut jimmy garoppolo and and move on and, and sign some guys so if anything it's the other way around they ain't cutting jimmy though that's what they said he's too good of a football player well they got to say that they got to say that. But I get it. It I makes sense. I don't think they will, and I don't think they have to until the season starts. Trey beats him out, or Trey, or they're they're tied, right? You only pay Jimmy if he's the starter at that money. It, yeah, but what what he said makes sense, right? Like it, teams are looking for quarterbacks. I don't want to just cut Jimmy Garoppolo just because I have other quarterbacks on the roster. You definitely don't cut Jimmy before the draft because someone could come right. calling on draft night someone could come calling there could be injuries right. to your guys other guys and there's no it does not help the 49ers at all to cut him right now eventually is it jimmy, might help them to cut him but right now is not that time is jimmy garoppolo better than mitchell trubisky uh, undoubtedly yes right so mitchell trubisky just signed to pittsburgh for whatever Nine why am i just gonna cut jimmy just to cut him if i feel like he's better than these quarterbacks on these other teams. Right. Yeah. No, you're not going to cut him just to cut him. And he, he could become more valuable than he is right now as he gets more healthy, as other teams get less healthy. Yeah. So it's just, it's just something that could happen. The only argument for cutting Jimmy was, Oh crap, we can't trade him, cut him before the start of free agency and spend that money on a free agent. Unless you're going to go sign Tyron Matthew right now or something like that. And you need a whole bunch of money then there's no no gain for the 49ers to cut him now because Jimmy might still have some value. Draft night, things go a certain way. We see the Saints maybe moving up. You know, do, Does a team not end up with a quarterback like the uh, Panthers? And then they come calling. So The way they've done it this whole time has been – it's almost like they've backed themselves into a corner and they keep getting like tighter and tighter in that corner and the walls keep closing in on them more and more. Like If they would have just said, you know what, thank you. Like Clearly we're moving in a different direction. We tried to trade you, didn't work. Your shoulder injury, the surgery, whatever. We'll eat the seven million, but we're just gonna let you go and move forward. And this is our guy. And okay, we have to eat, yeah, the seven point five or whatever. But you know, okay, we net eighteen million that we free up, and just all the questions that everybody's asked, and it, it's done, it's over and done with. And you would, you wish you would have gotten something, but it helps Jimmy Garoppolo because at least somebody can still go out and sign him, 
and you know he can be there for an off season or whatever, even if he's rehabbing. But now it's like they keep putting themselves in this situation, and, and I get it, but it's just it's not ideal for yeah, anyone it was, involved. It was a timing thing too, right? Yeah, it was a it was a timing thing with because the trades and the signings of the quarterbacks, they still thought they had value in Jimmy and that stuff dwindled after free agency started. So if they would have known then what they know now, maybe they would have cut him before free agency, but they didn't know that because they had to start free agency first for all the quarterbacks to start signing and then to find out who was going to go where and the musical chairs, then uh, Atlanta screws, the, screws their relationship up with Matt Ryan. Then all of a sudden Matt Ryan becomes available. So there was another quarterback that you didn't think was going to be on the market that becomes on the market. Maybe Jimmy Garoppolo a, uh, you know, uh, a member of the Colts right now, if that doesn't happen. Um, and Tom Brady comes back. That was going to be a destination for another team. Maybe somebody ends up there. And then now that team needs a quarterback still. So there was, uh, there was all this stuff that, that happened later that they couldn't have known was going to happen. And they would couldn't have known exactly how the shoulder was going to affect how teams looked at Jimmy Garoppolo because they had already had those conversations and they were pretty far down the line. So they probably felt really strongly that they were going to trade him. And why would you cut the guy if you thought you were going to be able to trade him and you didn't know that you weren't going to be able to trade him until weeks after free agency had already started. So it was a tough situation for them to be in kind of bad luck with how it all shook out with Jimmy G this off season too. They could have caused themselves and everyone else a lot less headaches by just letting them go. Well, you wouldn't do that though. Like you, if we would have brought that up say, Hey, they should cut Jimmy Garoppolo instead of getting a second rounder. We'd be like, no, just right. Trade. Right. Right. You know? but it, oh yeah. Cause they thought I was crazy when I jumped on the third round pick from, from the coats. <laughs> Uh, in the that, looks in the a lot, that looks a lot better on your part now, Croc, because people were giving you crap for taking a third. People would uh, people would drive him to the airport right now to get that third round pick. <laughs> All that right. Was hilarious. I was ahead of the curve on that. All right. We got to get out of here. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen. Croc and I back tomorrow. We are going to do it up live. Four o'clock Pacific, seven Eastern Thursday evening and finish the week strong with another live episode of Locked On 49ers. So check that out on YouTube if you want, or you can wait until Friday morning on all of the other podcast platforms. Make sure you're checking out Croc doing Locked On NFL Draft Daily. I'm doing the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show Daily right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Croc and I back tomorrow right here, Locked On 49ers.